I made this video twice now. I forgot to record this the first time, so anyway. <laughs> A couple months ago I started using Capture One as my raw processing engine uh, because I was getting fed up with uh, the live stream performance that I was getting out of my computer. So I was wondering if there was a faster way to get my SD card onto my machine. And I got intrigued, of course, and I geeked out a little bit about it. I tried various ways in which you can put files into the Capture One library. Um, so I went on a little quest to find out what the fastest way of importing these files was. I tried various methods, I tried various cards, and as it turns out, it doesn't make too much of a difference what you do. It's going to take about the same amount of time because the speed of the media is not the limiting factor. So I have two memory cards on my desk here and a card reader. and. This, these are the cards and memory card reader that I used for the testing. This is what I used as my slow memory card. Let's see if I can get this into focus. It's a 256 gigabyte SD card from SanDisk. It's a UHS-1 card, reads about 90 megabytes per second as per my testing, uh, which is a middle of the road. It's not the fastest card, it's not the slowest one, it's a decent card. And I was curious as to whether UHS-2 cards were any faster when importing. They are a lot faster to write to and a lot faster to read from. But weirdly enough, it doesn't make a difference. So this is the fast card that I used. Let's see if I can get this into focus, yep. It's a 128 gigabyte integral card that's got a nominal reading speed of 280 megabytes per second. In my testing, it did about 200, 190, 200 megabytes per second, which is about twi more than twice as fast as, this, as the slow card. And this is the memory card reader that I use for all my testing and outside of my testing too, because it's quite a fast one. It's a Sony XQD slash SD card reader that's, that does uh, UHS-2. I don't actually know what the technical limitations of this is, but it's plenty fast to do our current testing. So the normal way of putting um, files from an SD card to an internal SSD or any other storage device is to open your Capture One software or uh, Lightroom, select the SD card that you want to import from, select the files that you want to import, and then click import that puts everything into the default folder which is usually your either your only storage device which is like an internal SSD in a laptop or some place that you set up for your project. This is normally um, an external SSD for me. It's a Samsung T5 which doesn't have caching issues so I can copy a hundred gigabytes onto it and it's going to just copy at the maximum speed but you could use an external hard drive, you could use an internal hard drive. There's plenty of options, even a NAS, if you feel so inclined. So the various ways I tested were, I tried the normal default method of taking the SD card, putting that onto my NVMe internal SSD, which is PCIe 3. It reads and writes about 3000 megabytes per second. It's a very fast storage device because it's a desktop PC. And that took with my um, 600 file test data, which is about 14.7 uh, gigabytes. It took about four minutes and 21 seconds to import from the SD card straight onto the internal very fast SSD. So I figured there might be other ways or, or factors that come into play if you change your destination, your source, or the way you copy. So the way I tested this, I formatted the two uh, SD cards in the EOSR and I copied over the files in a memory card reader. I, I emptied every single cache that I could find and I opened a new catalog for every test to make a fresh start. The simple, the default way of importing files from an SD card is to just copy everything over from that using the program that you want. 
So select everything, click import, and then that puts everything into the destination folder. With my test data, that took four minutes and 21 seconds to the internal SSD. I then took the SD card and imported that onto a USB mounted SD, SSD, which is using the USB hub as well, the USB bus as well. And that took four minutes and 30 seconds, so nine seconds longer. I expected that to take a lot longer because both devices using the USB bus heavily. Uh, somehow that didn't make too much of a difference. That made me think. Okay, so the fastest way I could find was 4 minutes and 21. The second fastest was 4 minutes and 30. Is there a correlation between the bus? Is there a correlation between the speed of the SD card and the destination drive? Or is it all just a completely different um, bottleneck that I was working against. So I started using a HDD, the slowest thing I could find in my system to import into. And that took 5 minutes and 15 seconds, about 20% slower than the fastest SSD in my system. Which is not a huge amount of difference to be honest because it's 600 files, 15 gigabytes of data. I would expect that to be a bigger factor. And it's not. So of course I went on to use the faster SD card and see if that made any difference. And as it turns out, no, it doesn't. Uh, 4 minutes and 21 seconds from the faster SD card onto my fastest SSD. So I went on a little quest trying to find where the bottleneck was because um, it obviously wasn't the destination drive. I also tried uh, the faster SD card, made no difference whatsoever. I then went on to copy everything over to my external SSD, which is 500 by 500 megabytes per second, about two and a half times as fast as my fastest SD card. And tried importing from that, and it took five minutes. Slower than from an SD card. I do not understand how that happens, it just happened. So then I went, okay, so what happens if I copy everything over to my internal SSD and just import from there, like just in place, without any copying. Four minutes and 21 seconds. So obviously the bottleneck is not the source folder or the destination folder or the bus used between them. So where is it? Well, the answer lies in the definition of done that I set for this project. Um, I started the stopwatch when I hit import. So everything, copying and the preview generation added onto it. So at the moment, the copying and the uh, preview generation both finished, I stopped the timer. So that makes it quite obvious that the bottleneck is the CPU and the RAM and everything else in my system other than just the file transfers. Now, I used quite a fast computer for this test. It's an 8-core Ryzen 7 system, uh, Ryzen 3700X and 64 gigabytes of memory and my graphics card is a Vega 64 so it's quite a beefy system for this kind of thing. So this tells me the following. No matter how quick your SD card is or how fast your SSD is or how slow your SD card is within reason, the bottleneck is probably going to be the system that you try to render on. Um, if you render the previews. I didn't render a massive amount. If you do not render previews, the transfer speed is going to make a difference. So the reason for this is twofold. Even the entry level SD cards that we use are in the right magnitude for transfer speed for our other components to make a difference. And the other thing uh, that Capture One does is once you have a file copied, it starts rendering the preview. It doesn't wait for everything to copy over onto your library for it to start the preview rendering. It starts right away. So it uses the copy time to also do the rendering in. In conclusion, um, I have to say that copying straight from the SD card, importing straight from the SD card onto the fastest drive that has enough space is probably the simplest, easiest way to do this. 
has got the least amount of uh, fiddliness to it and it's just fewest amount of steps you have to take. Now there's a faster way to do this that I can think of and that only makes a difference if you have lots and lots of data. You do not really want big previews to be rendered. You have a very fast computer and you have time away from your computer to copy everything from an SD card onto a faster drive, such as an SSD. If you have a NAR box or something that reads an SSD or, or maybe you take a laptop with you and use that to copy your SD cards onto SSDs before you import everything on your um, big computer at home, that's what I would do. Otherwise, just stick to importing straight from the SD card. And the other thing that it tells me is that you can use slow SSDs, like consumer grade SSDs, to import onto and then work from. Uh, because working from a drive is not the same as importing onto a drive. You want a reasonably fast unit to work from so that it can draw in the files fast enough for you to be able to work with them. And that's usually an SSD with uh, small files like these. But we have consumer grade SSDs that take a big hit to the performance once you get to a certain limit. They have a cache in them and once you hit the cache, about 30 gigabytes, 50 gigabytes, once you hit that, the copying performance drops. It does not make a difference because that is not the limiting factor in importing into Capture One. So you can use these cheap SSDs, no problem at all. Furthermore, this also means that picking an SD card for the read speed is not a smart idea. Uh, or at least it doesn't make too much of a difference in um, import speeds. Use the SD cards that write fast enough for your camera and then um, just import from there. And just one last note, um, there's your operating system is probably using, utilizing a file cache. This means that once you touch a file, once you copy a file, it enters into a quick cache. It's either in memory or uh, somewhere next to your operating system. So usually on a fast drive. So once you work with a file, it's going to be cached. Doesn't really matter how quick the drive is that you try to use. If you're only working with files that um, have been opened recently. And I think next time I'm going to figure out how big a difference it makes to work from various uh, drives. Itchy, 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 itchy.